Hello and welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin. Today's story is a retelling of a story originally told in May of 2008. The original had a few problems with it, and so I'm retelling it today. I hope you enjoy the story. Winella sat patiently waiting, or at least trying to patiently wait. When she had first rushed into Lynn's little cottage with the leaf list in hand, she had had to wait because Lynn was busy cleaning her left front paw, and and then she had to clean the right front paw, and then finally she had looked up at Winella and said, you seem very excited about something. What is it? And Winella had sat down on Lynn's extremely comfy couch and said, look, I think the tree's going to grow a wand. Aha, said Lynn, what do you have there? And then she had taken the leaf from Winella and rearranged herself to be in the most comfortable possible position on the very comfy couch and had peered carefully at it and then peered some more, and then closed her eyes, and Winella was not entirely sure whether Lynn was deep in thought or napping. And then Lynn had opened her eyes, and Winella said, So? Interesting, said Lynn. It's a little scary, said Winella. That's quite the list. I mean, where am I going to find all of those things? Indeed, said Lynn. I don't even know if griffins exist anymore. But, she said, as with all big projects, Vanella, you should probably start with the first step. So let's see. Fairy dust. That one should be easy. Is it? said Vanella. I know a lot of fairies. I don't think I've ever seen any of them use dust. Oh, said Lynn. No, no, no. You don't have to go anywhere for that. That is the fairies of Neverland, fairy dust. It is what the lost boys all use to fly. They just sprinkle it on themselves and think happy thoughts. Well, said Vanella, do you think the lost boys will spare some? Oh, you don't have to get it from them, said Lynn. I'll tell you where to find the fairies in the forest. And then she had hopped off the comfy couch and drawn Vanella a little map. Here, she said in the south of the island, this forest. Walk along the paths there until the trees grow darker and taller and it gets quieter. And then, said Lynn, you will start to hear bells and look up in the trees and you will start to see little lights flitting to and fro, the pink girl fairies, the mauve boy fairies, the blue silly fairies that haven't made up their minds yet. And when you see them and you hear their tinkling bells up in the trees, if you look down at your feet, you will find that you are walking through just drifts and drifts of fairy dust. It's all over the place. They just drop it all around. Oh, said Vanella. Okay. Will you hold on to the leaf list for me? Of course, said Lynn. Go along now. So Winella had walked following Lynn's map south into the deeper forests of Neverland where the trees grew taller and darker and the forest grew quieter to the point that Winella was starting to feel just a little nervous when she heard a sound. But it was not the sound of tinkling bells that she had been expecting. It was a sound a little more like this. Yo ho, yo ho, yo ho 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 ho, ho ho, we're pirates, yo ho. Winella had immediately looked around and found a thicket of bushes that she had dove into, and now she was quietly sitting, watching the pirates march by her 
singing their marching song and carrying each pirate a bag a bag that Winella noticed was a little strange because although it seemed very full it did not seem heavy they actually looked as if they were almost floating off the pirates backs a bit the pirates had passed and passed and passed like they were having a grand pirate parade and Winella had to admit although she was not a big fan of pirates that they were not bad singers but she was impatient she had a leaf list to collect and so when the last pirate passed she almost made a terrible mistake she almost as soon as that last pirate was out of sight and the sound of singing was fading jumped out onto the path to continue on her way but then she remembered she remembered that sometimes one pirate walks behind quietly to catch the unwary who think that all the pirates have gone and it is safe to emerge from their hiding places and so she stayed in the bush and counted quietly to herself one mississippi two mississippi and before she reached the hundredth mississippi somewhere around the seventieth one actually she heard just a faint noise and saw a pirate go skulking by along the path ever so quietly peering into the shrubbery on each side of the path but he did not see her and continued on his way Winella held her breath as he passed and then she finished counting her mississippis to herself until she reached one hundred and finally emerged onto the path she walked quietly deeper into the forest deeper and deeper and then the trees started to get lighter and shorter and thinner and then she found herself emerging from the trees onto a beach on the south end of neverland she looked down at the map that lynn had drawn her this can't be right she thought i walked right through the part of the forest where lynn said the fairies of neverland live where are they she turned and retraced her steps and as she did a horrible thought occurred to her she looked around at the ground she could see just a few faint sparkling specks of dust oh she said the pirates have taken it they've taken it and chased off the fairies what am i going to do now she sat down on the forest floor and felt a few moments of despair and self-pity and then she got up and brushed herself off and said well there's nothing for it i'll just have to get it back she headed back to lynn's cottage when she arrived she told lynn everything that had happened mm, said lynn sounds to me like captain hook and his pirates have taken it i wonder what they want it for probably just to keep it away from the lost boys or who knows probably have stolen it just for the sake of stealing it said Winella. how am i going to get it back from them oh said lynn i don't really know can you help me said Winella. the pirates and i don't interfere with each other said lynn so no then said Winella. i'll be happy to advise you said lynn Winella sat down for a moment oh she said oh i'll be back where are you going said lynn i'm going to the catspaw highway said Winella. i have some sweet friends to see lynn sat for a moment waiting once Winella had disappeared and then she curled up on her extremely comfy couch tucked her nose under her tail and took a little nap Winella returned before long holding two large bags it seemed to be fairly heavy what do you have there asked lynn Winella plopped one of the bags down and opened it up see she said candy dust from candyland i'm going to trade the pirates i don't think that will work said lynn 
Captain Hook is not one to accept a trade. Oh, he'll trade with me, said Renella. I have something he wants more than what he has. Perhaps you ought to find one of your dragon friends to take with you, said then. The pirates are not safe. I'll be fine, said Renella. But thanks. She scooped up the two bags, threw them over her shoulders, and then said, Oh, where do I find the pirates? Then said, Are you sure? I am, said Renella. All right, said Lynn, and she sketched out the usual location of the Jolly Roger on her little map of Neverland. Renella examined it for a moment, nodded, and headed off into the trees. Captain Hook was sitting in his cabin, gloating at admiring his stolen bags of fairy dust, when his gloating was very rudely interrupted by the lookout, calling down that he had spotted something on the beach. What now? said Hook. He swept up his elegant pirate hat, and placing it on his head, emerged from his cabin. Why are you yelling? There, said the lookout from the top of the mast, pointing toward the beach. Captain Hook squinted. There appeared on the beach to be a girl holding two large bags. Yes, said Captain Hook. Why is this an emergency? She just came out of the trees, Captain, said the pirate. Captain Hook sighed and ambled over to the side of the ship. Hello, he called. May we help you? Yes, said the girl on the beach. My name is Winella, and I've come to trade with you. We're not interested in any trades, said Captain Hook. We are pirates. If you have something we want, we will just take it. Oh, I'm sure you could, said Winella. But you see, right now you have something you don't want, and I'm going to trade you for something better. What could you be referring to, said Captain Hook. Winella said, You've taken a bunch of fairy dust, right? I don't know how you know that, said Captain Hook. But it's really none of your business. Now I suggest you return to the forests, or wherever you came from, before you regret it. In response, the girl on the beach plopped down one of the bags that she had carried, dipped her finger in it, and then licked the powder off her finger. I have something much better, she said. And why shouldn't I just take it from you? said Captain Hook. Well, said Vanella, that would be poor form, I think. Captain Hook pondered for a moment. Would it be poor form? He seemed to think that if you were a pirate, stealing things from people was exactly the right form. But was stealing from little girls included in that? He really wasn't sure, and he wouldn't want to demonstrate poor form accidentally. It won't hurt anything for you to come talk to me, said Vanella. Just... Bring the fairy dust and as many pirates as you like. I promise I won't hurt you. Oh, said Captain Hook, I was not worried about that. But now, clearly, he had to prove that he was not afraid of the little girl on the beach to his crew. Otherwise, that would be poor form. And so he ordered the pirates to bring the fairy dust, and they loaded the longboat, and they rowed toward the beach. When Ella stood on the beach watching the pirates row towards her, she had a little bit of a lump in her throat and a little bit of a lump in her stomach, and she really hoped that this plan was actually a good idea. Captain Hook, in his regal pirate garb, stepped from the longboat onto the beach, followed by six pirates, each hauling a floating sack of fairy dust. Now then, said Captain Hook, tell me why I should trade with you. Because, said Winella, I have something wonderful. Candy dust. She opened the bag, revealing a multicolored, sparkling dust. It's made from all the little ground bits of extra candy from Candyland, Winella said. It's sweet, and every time you taste it, it's a different flavor. Hmm, said Hook, bending over, a little intrigued in spite of himself. May I? course, said Ronella. Captain Hook dipped the tip of his sharp, shiny hook into the bag of candy powder, and then delicately licked the powder off the tip. Hmm, he said, I must admit, 
that is quite tasty but he said i have six bags of fairy dust with this fairy dust my pirates and i shall fly and when we fly we will rule neverland no one not even those pesky lost boys will be able to stand against us oh no said Renella. that's why you want to trade me i'm afraid the fairy dust is quite useless to you what said captain hook it is not fairy dust is how you fly oh no said Renella. it won't do you any good you'll want the candy dust instead you should explain yourself said captain hook i am not a pirate who enjoys confusion oh said Renella. well in order for fairy dust to work you have to think happy thoughts hook stood for a moment his face blank he turned and looked at his pirates who were frowning slightly hmm said captain hook give me one of those he took he took the bag of fairy dust reached into it and sprinkled a fistful over his own head and then he closed his eyes Winella tried very hard not to smile captain hook stayed firmly rooted to the ground hmm said captain hook so candy dust yes said Winella. and i'll get rid of all that useless fairy dust for you hmm it's very good pirate form said Winella. i think to trade something useless for something good hmm said captain hook very well i have decided to make this trade the pirates gave a little cheer clearly they were much more enthusiastic about the idea of candy dust than hook had realized and so the trade was made Winella headed back into the forest carrying all six bags of fairy dust and hook and his pirates returned to their ship for a little candy dust party Winella carried all the bags back to the southern forests of neverland and when she arrived at the part where the trees were darkest and tallest and thickest she dumped five of the bags out over the ground so that there were heaps of fairy dust laying around the roots of the trees and as she did so she began to hear up in the very tops of the trees the tinkling sounds of bells and when she looked up she could see the little lights flitting to and fro pink and mauve and blue she waved and said thank you i'm going to take the sixth one if i may and the tinkling grew louder for a moment which she decided to take as permission and so she slung the bag over her shoulder and headed back to lynn's cottage to retrieve her leaf list and embark on her next adventure Neverland and its characters were invented by J. M. Barrie in the novel Peter and Wendy, which is in the public domain. Thanks for listening to today's story, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was created by Brandon Thompson. Your reviews and personal recommendations are the main way that new listeners find the show, so thank you for spreading the word. I'd love to hear your feedback, so feel free to get in touch via email or social media, which are listed in the show notes. Until next time, I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell someone you love a story.